Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We're going to do a little bit of double exposure in this tutorial today. It's going to be great. And we're going to do a little bit of parallaxing and we're going to show you how we can blend the images together and make them look awesome. So whether you're doing like a title sequence or you're just doing some sort of short little animation for a client project or whatever, you're going to be able to create an awesome double exposure and do pretty much whatever you want to do. So let's jump into this tutorial right now, not wasting more time. So, so we're going to start with our primary double exposure layer, which we have the uh, woman looking off in the distance and we're going to put an image with inside of her. So what we need to do is we need to first off key out the background here and if you're you know if you work in video I would shoot it on a chroma screen so you can easily key it out if not if you don't have a consistent you know colored background you're gonna have to uh, mask it out frame by frame which can be a pain but I'm gonna go through this really quickly with a nice little exposure key so we go to up to effect keying and if you have like green or blue I would use the key light effect and just select it if you have a white background like this, I'll click on extract and we go to, and we can bring this down to like, you know, 240 around there. And that gives rid of the entire background like that. And now we can move forward here. So we can position our uh, model here and bring her forward a little bit and center her up in, within our composition. And now we have our model in here. And then I'm also going to bring in another background. I'm going to bring this arch background in here, scale that down. So now we have a nice little background and we have our double exposure element. So, and now let's grab in the image that we want to put the double exposure on. So we'll come here and grab this tunnel uh, picture here, put it underneath our stand in model. And what we can do is toggle switches and modes. And then you need to set the image that you want to put in within this model to alpha matte. And you see this bottom tunnel layer takes the form of our subject. Now we can come in here and hit S on keyboard for scale and we can always just reposition it. As you see, it's just gonna take that form of our object here. And what we can do to bring back in some of our talent here, we can go to our original you know, model layer or whatever you're doing the double exposure on, go up to edit, duplicate, and we'll turn this layer back on and you see our models back in here. What we can do here is hit T on keyboard for opacity and bring down the opacity a little bit. And we'll be able to bring back some of the detail in the original layer. Now, this is looking cool, but what I like to do here is grab the rectangle tool and zoom out of our composition here and kind of just draw like a very nice, you know, half rectangle like this. And we hit F on keyboard for feather and feather this out. And if we come here, you'll see that we can keep the top detail, you know, within the top of our subject here. So that can look really cool. And, you know, we can always adjust the mask if we need to bring in a little bit more, maybe just lower the opacity on this layer. And what I like to do is go here to maybe our tunnel layer, go up to effect color correction curves, and just create a little bit more contrast uh, within our image here. So maybe we can add a little bit better blending properties in here. And of course we can do a little bit of repositioning to kind of create a nice little object here. And you know, that looks really awesome. And you know, just a little bit of repositioning can go a long way to making something that's really awesome. So now that we have this set up in a way, let's create a little bit of parallax for the animation. So what we can do, is go here to our two stand-in layers, our two you know main uh, model object layers, and we can hit P and S on our keyboard for bringing up position and scale, and add a keyframe for both of those. And we'll go forward in time to about five seconds or to, or to the end of your animation, and we'll go ahead and increase the scale on her a little bit, and we'll go ahead and reposition her so she's not going everywhere, and we can position the value to go down a little bit. And then we can go over here to our tunnel layer and also hit S and P on our keyboard. And we'll bring these keyframes all the way back in time. And we will position our tunnel up a little bit. And we'll scale it forward. So this way we're gonna create a little bit of parallax within this uh, simple animation here. And you see, that looks really cool. And then also, to save some time right now, let's also go to our background layer, hit S on keyboard for scale, and make sure this keyframe is all the way at the end of your animation and scale this forward a little bit. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna kinda zoom out of our background while we zoom into our double exposure here. So that'll create some nice parallax and I'll look really nice. And I'll come here and I'll take our entire double exposure here and I'll call it, you know, double exposure. And I'll click okay. Okay, so we can come in here and type out our text. So we can do like double exposure. And I'll keep this one on a separate layer. So we have our primary text here and I'll do one called exposure. And what we're gonna do is kind of make this title layer kind of like a double exposure in a way. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to bring in another image in here. So I'll bring in this mountain image in here, put it underneath our exposure layer, and I'll set the track map to add. And then you see we can take the full property of this background layer for our text. And what I like to do is put the other title behind our subject here. But if we go ahead and bring this layer underneath our double exposure layer, it's automatically going to get cut into our subject here. And maybe in some cases you might be able to make this work and it'll, it'll look beautiful. But let's go into our double exposure comp and let's grab the rectangle tool and make sure we grab our image that's creating the double exposure, which in this case is the tunnel. And I want to draw a nice rectangle mask like this on it. And we'll go ahead and set it to subtract. And we'll hit F on our keyboard, feather it out, maybe like 200 or so. And we go back into our main comp you'll see that we'll be able to see right through our, uh, you know, our image here and see the text behind it. So it's a really cool technique if you want to go ahead and implement it. So we'll do a little bit of parallax as well for our text layer here with the mountain. So go to the mountain layer and hit P and shift S on your keyboard to uh, bring up position and scale. I also brought up anchor point, but not a big deal. And we'll come here, add a keyframe for both of those. Maybe we'll increase the scale of it just by a little bit. And we'll bring these, both these keyframes to the end of our composition. And we will go ahead and bring this down. And we'll reposition our image here. So now we'll have a little bit of animation within our text as, as well. And it'll look really cool. All right, so now that we're kind of wrapping this up, let's go ahead and turn on motion blur for our layers. Make sure you go into the double exposure comp and turn on those motion blur layers as well. And we'll turn it on at the top here. And you should be able to go ahead and export this clip. And after a quick render, this is what we have and a little nice double exposure and parallax going on here. So hope you guys found this tutorial valuable. If you guys did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I hope you have a good day. <laughs>